Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you doing today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope everything is good and great and wonderful in your world. Everything is going fine here. Yesterday, uh, I came down here to work on the headboard project and I filmed myself using nothing but this little Acaso V50 Elite action cam. And uh, today I started to edit that video and there's a problem. It's not, it's not a problem. It's a problem I'm making up in my head, obviously. Um, I don't like it. I don't hate it, but I don't necessarily like it. There's a few problems with this camera. I mentioned it yesterday. It seems to overheat. It seemed to really not do very good at all in, um, time-lapse mode, which I thought was strange. I thought it would be you know, uh, better in time-lapse mode than, than not, but it seems like it would rather just run all the time, which is probably, now that I've started to edit the video, I shot two time-lapses yesterday. I drilled about, oh, 15 or so um, pocket holes on this headboard frame, and I time-lapsed that, and then I time-lapsed me drilling some side holes, uh, and when I started the edit and I started watching that, the time lapses feel really weird because they're just these silent little do 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 do, and it's like I didn't like it. So I think I would rather just run continuous footage and then do the you know 25 times speed um, to get it to that close to one frame per second. But it also brings some audio and there's a little bit you can there's noise and there's stuff right. The other thing is the lens distortion on this camera. Um, unfortunately, I'm not using Adobe products anymore. I'm using an open source software called Shotcut, Shotcut to do my video editing, and it has a lens distortion correction doohickey in it, but I can't figure out how to set it properly. I have no clue. And um, this camera is supposed to have built-in lens distortion correction, and I had tried it once, and I thought I had saved it, to be that way, but it appears none of the footage I shot yesterday is recorded with that distortion correction. So everything's distorted. It looks really weird. So I have to figure that out. And the entire reason I bought this, the entire reason I went through the trouble of getting a handheld gimbal, of getting a new camera, is because this camera is a little bit too much of a barrier for me working in this space. It gets in the way, the tripod gets in the way, but not only that, Part of the reason I've been able to do this show for 1,100 episodes, or what, we're almost at 1,100 episodes. The reason I've been able to do that is because I don't edit these videos, because the camera is ready to go, all the settings are preset, I put it on the tripod, hit play, or hit record, turn the lights on, and I talk. And if I come down here to do shop stuff, I can't do that. I can't use this microphone, so I have to unplug that one and I have to put a different microphone in. And a different microphone requires different video or different audio settings in the camera. And it's very, very often when I'll record a video with that and then in the shotgun mic, and then I forget to switch the audio back for this mic, and then the next day's video sounds terrible. Or vice versa, I don't remember to set the audio in that, and so it's you can't hear anything because this mic is powered. It's got a huge gain output so that I'm overriding the, the camera's uh, audio processor. So it, all of those little things get in my way and when there's barriers, I, I just won't do it. It's that simple. So I'll just be like, eh, I, I get frustrated. So I decided a dedicated shop camera, shop camera, shop rig. Not only can this shoot steady with a miniature tripod like this, I can also hand it to anybody who's in the shop. It's a gimbal so they can shoot perfect steady footage of me doing whatever I want and I thought it would work out great. I knew the audio was going to suffer, and that is a problem. The audio is not great. It's not terrible, as long as I'm about three feet from the camera. The problem is, when I set it up like maybe five or six feet away, and I'm trying to project towards it, I really have to boost my vocals just to, just to get that sound across, and maybe that's just practice. Maybe I just need to speak louder, or I need to come up with some sort of a, of a, 
a way to get this closer to me without it becoming um, it without it interfering with my workflow. Uh, I did find, however, using the Wi-Fi app on my phone as a monitor, it was really convenient because I could have my monitor right here. I'm looking, okay, and then I could just hit record and go. I didn't have to reach for the camera. I didn't have to do anything like go set it up, point, okay, hit record, come back around, go, all right do my thing, walk back over to the camera. I was just right here, touch, go, touch, stop. I loved that. So those are the problems that I had with it, and I'm going to keep looking for solutions. There's got to be some better, uh, either the settings in this camera, or um, I might have to do external audio, which I really don't want to do. It's, it's kind of difficult to stitch audio and video back together, especially when I would have to have two stop and record buttons to try to keep everything in sync. That, again, is another barrier that's going to get in my way, and I would rather just figure out a way to project my voice or to lower the room noise. Like, I had that door open yesterday because it was 95 degrees outside just to let some of the cool AC in, and there's something loose in there. Huh. Maybe it's just the battery. Anyway, <laughs> distraction. Sorry about that. Um, maybe shutting the door would be a good idea because I there was quite a bit of background noise that really muffled things. I don't know. I, I'm going to keep working on it because I, as I edited the video, this is the other problem that I'm having right now is... I shot the first half of this build, not the first half, well, yeah, the first half. I shot all of the milling of the lumber, I shot all of the pre-cutting, like when I went upstairs and measured her bed, I had her shooting some of that on a GoPro and some of that on this camera. I shot all of the milling of the headboard, I shot the glue up of the headboard, I shot the milling of all of these things. I did all of that with that camera, with the GoPro, in the kind of traditional way that I would shoot things. Lots of setups, lots of angles, switching back and forth between cameras so that you got, you know, there was something fun and visual to watch as, as I tell the story of me putting this together. And then starting yesterday, like, so you see all that, and then I come down with this, and I'm like, all right, you know what? Uh, this is getting in my way. I want to just talk to the camera and that's kind of a realization that I had. I want to go forward with, I don't want to do voiceover. I don't want to do big edits of having to piece all of these sub shots together. I want to be able to do as much as I can in the camera and I want to talk to you while I'm working and I want to just make videos, right? I don't want to make productions. I think that's the difference. I was when I when I used to make production video or woodworking videos, I tried to make production videos. I tried to make the Jimmy Duresta videos. I tried to make the I like to make something videos. I tried to make the, uh, um, you know, the, the maker video. And I don't want that. I don't want the production. I just want to make stuff and maybe some people watch it. And that's been the biggest inspiration I've had for that through this whole COVID thing is Adam Savage. He's, he's been doing just turning his cell phone on and recording himself for like an hour. And I mean, I watched an hour one day of him building a box, just like a six sided box with a hinge and a lid. I watched that for an hour. Any other maker either wouldn't have made that video or would have been six minutes. Like here's how you make a box and bam, there's a box. Adam Savage took almost an hour and he talked through the whole thing and talked about his process, talked about his tools. And I was really like, this is what I would like to do. I would like to just make videos like that where it's just turn the camera on. Let's go. Let's do this. So the funny part about this edit is going to be, if I get it done, I'm not going to say it's, it's ever going to happen, but if I get it done, you'll see this first like three minutes of video is the cool, you know, maker style video. And then it cuts to all right, guys, I'm, I'm just going to talk. <laughs> it's a little bit jarring, uh, and I, I hope it's okay, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to put out whatever I have whenever it's done <laughs> just to see your reaction. I'm, I'm planning on, uh, once I get more comfortable with this setup, and once I get, uh, I would like to have five videos ready before I go. I plan on starting a new channel that's dedicated to just those videos because they'll get lost in this and I don't want that. I want I want that channel to be its own 
thing where people watch those videos because I only put out one video a month or one video every three months or whatever. So it's going to be its completely its own thing. Um, but this headboard video, because it's weird, it's going to go on this channel. It's, it, it's, I think you're, the, you know, you guys are the ones that are going to watch it. I don't think anybody else is going to find it. Nobody's searching for, you know, lighted headboards. <laughs> Okay, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking and commenting and subscribing and being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I will see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is bilateral. It is an adjective meaning touching, existing on, or having being agreed to by two sides. The president signed a bilateral disarmament agreement with the nation bordering to the north. Bilateral, B-I-L-A-T-E-R-A-L.